have seen a lot of people make this mistake, especially in production environments. So please don't do this. And that is, let's say you have a server or even a React application and you need to handle state. So you need to remove things from the database or from the cache in the case of React. You need to update records. You need to do a lot of transformations. So let's take this example. We have a function, check user permission, takes in a user ID, then the permission. And let's say we query for something to see if the user is authorized to perform that action. And then we have another function, get post details. So we pass in a post ID. We do a query to the database, get all of that information for the post. So in this case, we're just returning an ID and a title, and then we have a delete post function. So again, we take a post ID and we just do a delete from X table and call it a day. But let's say we have a handler like this one. So we take in the request, we take in the context, which again is a session with a user ID. So we have a middleware somewhere that is going to retrieve the session from the authorization header, and it is going to give us back the user ID that pertains well to that particular session. So here, all we do is retrieve the post ID. So we say url.searchparams.get the post ID, then we retrieve the user ID, then we check if the user has permission. If they don't have permission, we just return a new response that is 403, which means forbidden. Then we get the post details. We pass in the post ID and we check if the post exists. If there is no post, we cannot delete a post. So we return a 404, post not found. And finally, we have delete post, but we pass in a user ID. Now, as far as TypeScript is aware, delete post takes in a number and user ID is a number. So this is completely fine. But what if your database has auto incrementing integers or the IDs? Now you could potentially be passing the user ID, let's say eight, and we're deleting the post eight which could pertain to a completely different user. So now that user is going to open up the application and they cannot find that post anywhere. So as you can see, it is very problematic. Now, of course, just by reading the code, we know this is a user ID and it doesn't really make sense to pass in a user ID to delete a post. I mean, depends on the architecture, but generally you'd pass the ID of a post and you could say, well, just change this to post ID. But again, what if Copilot did this for you or you needed to push this out to production as fast as possible? You've now introduced a bug. So this is where nominal types come into play, which are also known as branded types in TypeScript. And that is you assign a unique property to a type so that you can distinguish types that share the same underlying type. So we know that a post ID is a number and the user ID is a number. So we can say type user ID is equal to number. And then at the type level, you add this unique property. Now you will not be able to access this in the runtime because you're not assigning this property to a user ID. But as for the type level, it is going to be really useful. So now you can say user ID, post ID, and then you can replace the user ID like this. You can use the post ID in these two functions. Now here in the user ID, this is going to be again a user ID. And by doing this, if I scroll down, we're now getting two errors. We're getting an error here saying post ID is not assignable to parameter of type post ID. And why? Because post ID is just a number. It doesn't contain this property. So what you need to do in this case is say, this is going to be a post ID. So now you have asserted this. Now you need to make sure that this is true. And now we get rid of the error. But now here in line 54, we're getting an error because, well, the types do not correspond. We have a user ID and we're trying to pass it over to a post ID. So now it's very easy to see where we're going wrong. And we can just change this to be the post ID as simple as that.
Now, what if you want to enforce this at the runtime as well, not just at the compile time? Well, for that, I would recommend using this great library, and that is import effect from effect. So go ahead, install this library. This one is going to give you a utility, which is brand. Now, what you can do here is you can define a refined brand. So you can say const and then user ID is equal to brand. And then you say refined and then you pass in the type for the brand. So in this case, you can say number and then an intersection. And then here you say brand dot brand. So this is a utility type. This is an interface. And then you pass in the identifier for this brand. Now, why do you need to do this? Because effect needs to somehow identify your brand. And that is when you're piping things and whatnot, which I'll show you in a moment. And now here, what you can do is you get access to the number. So you can say, first of all, number must be greater than zero because it is an auto incrementing integer. You know that it is going to start at zero. And in the case that it is not valid, you get not valid or invalid number. And then you can say brand dot error and then you can pass in a custom error, whatever you want. So this is the on failure. So you can say invalid number is not a valid user ID. And now we can get rid of this type, but to extract the type, you can say user ID, and then you can say brand dot, and then you can say from constructor, and then you pass in type of user ID. So now you have the type level for the brand, and you have the runtime brand. So we can do the same for the post ID. So const post ID, we do the same, and then we use from constructor and assign the type. Now, how can you use it in the runtime? Well, for that, you can say const post ID, and then you pass in the post ID. And as you can see, the resulting type is a number and brand dot brand post ID. Now, if this validation fails, so this one right here, it is going to throw that error. Now, notice how this isn't particularly very useful because when you hover over it to type, you can see, okay, it's a number and brand dot brand post ID. But what if you want to get the type alias? Because you see, okay, so the post ID is going to be a number and brand dot brand post ID. Let's create a function that is going to accept this. But now you're going to be a little bit lost. You're going to say, should I copy this data type, paste it in the argument of the function, or should I extract this to its own type alias? Well, for that, you can just come here and instead of saying from constructor, which is like the easiest way, you can just say number and brand dot brand, and then you say post ID, and then you can replace this generic and then you say post id and you can do the same for the user id and now when you come here and hover over the variable you know that it is a post id so now you know that you can maybe import this type alias but notice how we're doing this number because we need to convert it to a number first and then we need to check if it's greater than zero but we're not checking if it is actually an integer, it could be a decimal. We can refine this even further. So for that, you can extract another brand. So you can say int or integer, or you could say integer, whichever you prefer. And then you say this will be a number and brand dot brand integer for simplicity purposes. And then we get the number and we just check if it's an integer. And if not, we can say this is not an integer. And then we can do the same for a positive integer. So we can say const positive, and then we just check if it's greater than zero. So now we can come here, and instead of doing this, we can just say brand dot all, and then you pipe this through. So first of all, it must be an integer, and then we must check that it is positive. And as for the type itself, now here you need to say brand dot brand from constructor type of post ID. So now you have created these brands that are generic. So you can construct brands from these and then you can just utilize them however you want. You can say user ID and then brand dot all again must be an integer and positive and then the type will be this one. 
Now, of course, when you hover over this, well, as you can see, okay, post ID is a number and brand.brand .brand integer and brand.brand .brand positive. But the plus is you get this great system and you get runtime validations. Now, what if you're using brand from effect, but you want to create nominal types, meaning that they are not enforced at the runtime, just at the type level, like we did before? Because realistically speaking, you wouldn't really validate user ID because that's self-contained within the application. And it really doesn't make sense to validate when you control the code and you can enforce that at the type level. Now you cannot enforce the post ID from the incoming request because anyone can send whatever they want. But for the case of your application, this is just redundant. So what you can do here instead is you can say const user ID brand nominal and then you say user ID, you just invoke this and then say user ID number and brand dot brand and then the identifier. And that's it. This is for compile time. So you get the type safety and this is for the runtime level. So it validates at the runtime. Now to use the user ID, you do the same. So you can say const user ID two, and then you just say user ID passing a number and you get back a user ID. As simple as that. Nothing too crazy. Now, what about the client side? Let's say you want to have a schema, like a SOT schema, and you need to validate the incoming data. How can you create a brand from the validated result? Well, if you use SOT, you could create a schema, say parse or save parse, but then you need to map over the result and you need to replace the, say, the user or post ID with the brand, with the nominal brand. So to avoid that, effect actually has a module for schema. So you can say effect and then it's at effect and then schema. So you need to download these separately. And this one brings you over schema, which is everything that you see here. So it has a lot. Now, if you fetch this endpoint, it is going to give you back. So response, it is going to give you back an array of ID, which I believe it's a number, then to do, which is like the description, then completed, which is a Boolean, and then a user ID, which is a number, and then a total, which is number. This is for pagination, skip, and limit. Now you need to convert this to a runtime schema. How can you do that? Well, for that, you can say const response schema is equal to schema. And then if you've ever used something like yup or sud, you know that it's going to be object. But in this case, it is going to be struct, which is the same like an object. And then here you pass in the fields. So you can say to do's, and then this will be a schema dot array. And then here you pass in the other struct. So you say schema dot struct, and then you can say ID is going to be a schema and then that number. So as you can see, it is quite similar to SAD, or I would say it is almost identical, at least at the fundamental level. And then you say that pipe. So you pipe this through, same as we did with brand at all. And then you say this will be an integer. And then this must be greater than zero. And then you can do the same for to do. So string dot pipe and then schema. You can say schema dot trimmed and then schema dot and then you can say non empty and then the completed well this one is just the schema dot boolean and then the user id and then for the other ones again they must be integers greater than zero except for skip because skip can be zero and that's it but now how can we add the schema level tell effect that, hey, user ID is going to be a branded type and the ID for it to do will be a branded type because we need to differentiate between the two. Well, for that, all you need to do is create the nominal brands because this will be for the runtime and the nominal types will be for the compile time. So you can say const user ID is equal to brand, then nominal, and then type user ID 
we can say number and brand dot brand and then you say this will be a user id and then you can pass in the user id here and then what you need to do is pipe it through again so you can say schema dot brand and this is actually from brand not a brand and now when you parse this you're going to get back not only well the integer greater than zero but also the branded or rather the nominal type, but well, this is for the runtime. And you can do the same for a to-do ID. So you can say to-do ID and then number and brand.brand .brand, to do ID. And then you say nominal, and then you can come here to ID and just say schema dot from brand and then to do ID as simple as that. Now, how can you get back the data, which is very important? Well, for that, you can just say schema and then you say the code unknown. So this is not parse or save parse. This is the code unknown because you're decoding something and that something is unknown. And then you pass in the schema. So you say response schema. And then here you can pass in some extra properties. So you can pass in errors and and an on excess property. And this is a union of error, ignore, or preserve. So if there is an excess property, well, just throw an error, basically. In the case of ignore, that means remove them. We only want those defined here in this schema. And in the case of preserve, we'll leave them be. We obviously do not get any type safety for those extra properties, but we still have them within the object. So in this case, we can say ignore. And now when you invoke this, it is going to, well, return a function. That's why we're invoking this again. And then you can pass in the data that you want to parse. So you can say test and then a string. And then you have some override options. That is, if you want to extract this into its own generalized parser, so you can say const parse or the code response schema from unknown. And then you can say schema dot decode unknown. You do this and then you can come here and say decode response schema from unknown. You pass in the data and then here you can override the properties that you defined here, basically. Now, when you do this, what you're getting back is an effect. Now, if you're not familiarized with effect, you will not understand anything here. But let me quickly explain what is going on. So here, this is going to return an effect and the first generic that it is going to return. So up to here is the result. So if this is successful, we get access to this data. Now, in the case that this function errors because, well, the data is malformed or doesn't satisfy this structure here, then it is going to give you back a parse error and we can ignore this never. And to get access to the data, you just need to pipe this through and then you can say effect and then you can say dot and then you can say catch. And here you can say parse error because this is the only error this could result in. And then you can pass in something that you want to do with this error. So you get the error here. But in this case, let's just say, OK, we will succeed with null in the case that this fails. And then we can say effect dot run synchronous. Although I'm not entirely sure if this is somehow considered a promise, we would have to run this code. Anyway, result is equal to this. And if we take a look, we get our read only. So that's great. We're promoting immutability. And as you can see, the ID is a brand of to do ID and the user ID is a brand of user ID. And well, this could be null in the case, these errors basically. So we can have a function and say print or get to do. And then you can say ID, you can say to do ID. And then if you say if result is different from null, then get to do and then result dot to do's at zero. And then you can say ID. And as you can see, we get no error here. But if we change this over to a user ID, we get an error because the brand doesn't satisfy this brand type. Now, just like SUD, you can get access to the error and you can say error dot and you get the cause, the message, the name, you get everything which is great. And you get a full type safety because as you can see, when we're piping through this effect, we know that it can result in a parse error. So we get full type safety here. And this wraps up the video. 
if you want to learn more about all of these concepts and advanced techniques in TypeScript, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.